In this video, we'll describe the three Mexicana Comet 4C aircraft, some basic details of their use, and how they eventually ended up. If you've seen episode one of the O'Hare Comet, you know that Mexicana operated three de Havilland Comet 4C aircraft, one of which ended its days at O'Hare Airport at Chicago, Illinois, USA. That comet was originally XANAS, operated by Mexicana. So how did Mexicana acquire the comets and when? Mexicana was founded in 1921 as Compañía Mexicana de Aviación, which translates to Mexican Airline Company, operating from Mexico City. By 1929, Juan Tripp and his Pan American Airways acquired the majority stock in Mexicana. Tripp expanded Mexicana's routes into the United States using Ford Tri-Motors, first flying into Brownsville, Texas. During the 1930s, Mexicana expanded with new routes to Guatemala City, Veracruz, Minatitlan, Iztapic, Tapachula, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Cuba, Nicaragua, Panama, and Los Angeles. The 1940s saw Mexicana operating the Douglas DC-4, which was added to their fleet of DC-3s. Routes were added to Monterrey, Nuevo Laredo, and Merida. During the 1950s, the more advanced propeller-driven Douglas DC-6 was added to the fleet, opening routes to Puerto Vallarta, Oaxaca, and San Antonio, Texas. But by 1952, the de Havilland Comet 1 had gone into service with British Overseas Airways Corporation, or BOAC, as the world's first jet airliner. One trip, realizing that his Pan American needed to join the jet age, announced a $6.3 million order for the forthcoming Comet 3, which featured a lengthened fuselage and longer range than the Comet 1. Delivery of the forthcoming Comet 3 was to be in 1957. Tripp told the press, I permit the acquisition of a fleet for principal trade routes abroad if suitable American manufactured jet transports were not available by that time. Pan Am had yet to decide to fly the forthcoming Comet 3s on Latin American Far East or transatlantic routes, but by 1954 the plan was abandoned with the loss of two Comet 1s due to explosive decompression and the loss of another five aircraft in takeoff and landing accidents. With Britain's lead in commercial jet transportation, de Havilland abandoned the Comet 1 and 2 designs, retooled, and built the completely redesigned Comet 4. By 1958, the longer and completely redesigned Comet 4 was ready for the market. At Mexicana, there was great familiarity with de Havilland as Pan American had guided Mexicana with financial and technical matters involving the new jets. The American Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8 were to be on the market soon, but the soonest availability for jetliners was the de Havilland Comet 4. With that, Mexicana placed a $14 million order for three Comet 4C aircraft with a massive spare parts inventory and a Redifon flight simulator. The three Comet 4Cs, XANAR, XANAS, and XANAT, were delivered in 1959, with service starting in 1960 from Mexico City to Los Angeles, California. The new jet service was spectacular, with all first-class seating and a smooth ride jet experience. The Comet routes were expanded to San Francisco, San Antonio, Dallas, Miami, and Chicago. But by the early 1960s, Mexicana was experiencing fierce competition and financial problems and additional Comet 4C purchases were canceled. With the more fuel-efficient and shorter-range American-built Boeing 727 on the drawing board, a stopgap solution was needed. In 1964, Mexicana leased two of the shorter-body Comet 4s from BOAC, which were registered XANAP and XANAB. 1968 found Pan American selling its stock ownership in the airline and Mexicana became 100% Mexican-owned. By 1970, Mexicana had decided to upgrade to Boeing 727s and McDonnell Douglas DC-10s. The two Comet 4s were returned from lease and the three Comet 4Cs were traded to Boeing as part of the 727 purchase. Of note, the accident rate of the 1950s and 1960s jet age was tremendous. The Comet 4 and 4C aircraft, being built like tanks, 
served Mexicana well with no accidents except a landing gear malfunction by XANAT in 1966 and later in 1970, and a runway excursion by XANAS at Chicago O'Hare Airport in the 1960s. So what happened to the three Comet 4Cs after being withdrawn by Mexicana? We'll start with XANAT. The aircraft sat dormant in Mexico City from 1970 to 1973 when it and the other two comets were purchased by small aircraft dealer Western Air of Albuquerque, New Mexico, not to be confused with Western Airlines. Western Air refurbished the three comets and XANAT was registered with the American registration N777WA. But the aircraft never flew again and it was abandoned in Mexico City. In the mid-1990s, the aircraft was repainted and moved to the zoo in Mexico City as part of a children's playground. By the 2010s, the badly corroded aircraft was cut up for scrap. Moving on, in 1973, XANAR was also purchased by Western Air, who repainted and registered it as N888WA. Western Air was trying to sell all three Comets as a complete airline package, but was having trouble finding a buyer. By 1975, Western Air sold N888WA to small charter company Redmond Air of Washington State, and this new company attempted to use the aircraft for charter operations. Its last flight occurred in July 1979 as the aircraft was flown from Salt Lake City, SLC, Utah, to Everett, PAE, Washington. Several in-flight malfunctions resulted in the airplane being grounded in Everett, where it was abandoned by Redmond Air. The aircraft was transferred to famous Boeing engineer and aircraft restoration expert Bob Bogash, who arranged to have the airplane repainted by the Boeing company. The airplane was then transferred to the Everett Community College Aircraft Maintenance School, who used it for several years. By 1994, N888WA was transferred to the Museum of Flight in Seattle and placed in the museum's restoration center at PAE, where it rests today. The cockpit and interior have been meticulously restored, but the aircraft's future is uncertain. Finally, XANAS, the O'Hare Comet, was also purchased by Western Air in 1973, who repainted and registered it as N999WA. In 1974, Western Air flew the aircraft to Albuquerque, and they attempted to sell the aircraft and the Redifon flight simulator to Redmond Air. But the deal did not materialize. Instead, in late 1976, Dick Drost, who owned Naked City in Indiana, a nudist colony, purchased N999WA and the Redifon flight simulator. The aircraft was to be Dick Drost's flying clubhouse, and he needed it to be flown to Chicago O'Hare Airport, ORD. Western Air hired two Western Airlines Boeing 727 pilots, Tom Malone and Bob Poole, along with Belgian flight engineer Paul Everard. Despite the two pilots having zero experience or training on the Comet, the FAA granted a one-time ferry permit which included, This letter authorizes you to serve as pilot in command in Hawker Siddeley de Havilland 106 Comet 4C type aircraft, notwithstanding the fact that you do not hold a type rating for this aircraft. It also stipulated VFR-only flight conditions and the minimum crew to be aboard. On December 11, 1976, the crew flew N999WA from Salt Lake City to O'Hare. In Martin Painter's amazing book on the Comet, he provides Captain Tom Malone's account of that flight. After two days reading the flight manuals, swinging the gear and flaps, doing several high-speed taxis, etc., I was ready to fly the old gal. I phoned Bob Poole, an intergalactic explorer in some previous life, and he showed up a couple of hours before planned departure. We had worked together on several flying adventures and had a great deal of trust in each other. In discussing the flight later, Bob and me, calling on all our aviation knowledge, education, and experience, came to the inescapable conclusion that the series of events that came to pass, from ABQ to ORD, could only have one cause. Comet N999WA was haunted. The flight around the pattern to a full stop landing at ABQ went well. I found the comet a friendly old bird and we decided to press on to Chicago. Shortly after level off, our gremlin played its first card. ATC casually inquired if we were really at flight level 450. Bob muttered an obscenity and swore to the controller that the transponder was an unmitigated liar and that we were indeed at our assigned altitude. Later, the number one VHF com emitted its last shaky watt. The number one VHF nav was the next to defect a full hour before the number 2 VHF nav vanished. 
Bob sighed. Then he got us vectors to ORD, and as we were descending through 9,000 feet, approach control advised they showed our speed as 275 knots. Both airspeed indicators showed 245 knots. Bob sighed again. As we slowed below 190 knots, approach confirmed our speed as correct. For his finale, our demon disabled the thrust reversers and I brought N999WA to taxi speed with brakes only. Captain Bob Poole recalls, after landing at ORD, we taxied the aircraft over to Butler Aviation where we were met by the new owner. This was perhaps the most bizarre development of the whole flight. The new owner was the principal of the largest nudist colony in the U.S., Naked City, Indiana. It was his plan to use the aircraft as a travel club type of operation. I will let your imagination do the rest. In addition, the new owner was a paraplegic, therefore he could not come aboard to inspect the aircraft, rather a photographer and Miss Naked City USA came on board. Although none of us had been out of the airplane since landing, we had a significant amount of liquor aboard which we had broken open immediately upon shutdown so as to celebrate our successful flight. Sitting for many months on the Butler Aviation ramp at O'Hare, the Comet required several maintenance tasks as well as major inspections that would possibly require the airplane to be flown to England. Meanwhile, Dick Drost experienced legal and financial problems and N999WA was left derelict at O'Hare. The airplane never flew again and in the late 1970s was transferred to the city of Chicago who moved it to the abandoned Air National Guard hangars off runway 32 right. From there, in 1986, the Comet team was started by Rotary Club member Ross Jacobs with the goal of dismantling the airplane to be moved to the Smithsonian. Meanwhile, the Redifon flight simulator made its way to Naked City, Indiana, but was cut up for scrap at some point in the 2000s. Regarding N999WA, that's where the rest of the story continues in Episode 3. If you like this video, please make a donation at dehavelandcomet.com so we can continue funding the Comet Project.